And if you remember correctly, we were talking about cult and the heresies that we find today. And I want us to continue in the same because it is good for us to understand what can be able to help us so that we don't fall 
victims to the people who behave like that. Na ningependa tuendelee kwa mafundisho hayo ili kwamba tukaweze kuelewa yale yanayoweza kutusaidia tusiweke tusiweze kuangukia mtego ya wale walio na elimu kama hiyo. Today I want to touch some of the doctrines which have been largely abused by the people who call themselves uh, leaders of the cultic groups. Leo hii nataka kuuguzia baadhi ya mafundisho ambayo yametumiwa vibaya sana na wale wanao enesa elimu ya uzushi. Because when they deviate from the right doctrines, they bring some things just slowly by slowly which later on make the whole teaching to be irrelevant. Kwa sababu wanapoondoka kwenye mafundisho yaliyo ya kweli, pole pole wanaingiza mambo ambayo yananajisi mafundisho hayo. And they are very wise in the way that they bring them that you may not realize but later on you realize that you have gone out of the way. Na wanafanya mambo hayo kwa njia ya uh, maarifa na hekima hivi kwamba hauwezi kuelewa unaelewa tu baada ya kujikuta umekwenda mbali so the doctrine number one which they have largely abused is the doctrine of god fundisho la kwanza ambayo wameitumia vibaya ni fundisho juu ya mungu some of them have even called themselves gods baadhi ya hao wamejiita miungu but i call them gods in quotes because nobody can equal to god ninawaita miungu kwa mabangu kwa sababu hakuna mwanadamu yeyote anayeweza kujifananisha na mungu how should we understand god and the doctrine of god so that we don't fall prey to these people je tunawezaje kumwelewa mungu na mafundisho juu ya mungu ili kwamba tusiangukie mtego ya watu hao the bible says in the book of first john 1 and verse number 1 to 5 the following that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made for in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light shines in darkness and darkness can not overcome it injili ya yohana moja mstari wa kwanza hadi 5 maandiko yanasema hapo mwanzo kulikuwa kwa neno na neno alikuwa hapo kwa Mungu na neno alikuwa Mungu huyo mwanzo alikuwa hapo kwa Mungu vyote vilifanyika kwa huyo wala pasipo yeye akikufanyika chochote kilichofanyika mstari wa nne ndani yake ndimo ulimokuwa uli uzima na ule uzima ulikuwa nuru ya watu na hiyo nuru ya ng'aa gizani wala giza alikuiweza Before I come to dissecting that verse I want us to understand that light has shone or has come to the world but people tend to love darkness more than the light Kabla kuchambua kurasa hilo niseme kwamba nuru imekuja walakini watu wengi hawajapenda nuru ndio hivyo wanaegemea giza God has brought the light so that we are able to know him but we cannot know him because we tend to lean more on the side of darkness Mungu akamleta nuru ili kwa nuru huyo hiyo tukaweze kumfahamu hata hivyo tusiweze kumfahamu kwa sababu tunaegemea zaidi giza That is what the Bible says in the book of John 3 and verse number 19 that this is the verdict light has come into the world but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil Ndivyo maandiko yanasema katika Yohana 3 mstari wa 10 kwa maana hii ndio hukumu ya kwa nuru imekuja ulimwenguni na watu wakapenda giza kuliko nuru kwa maana matendo yao yalikuwa maovu So people who tend to lean on the part of heresy and cultic teaching about God is because they don't love the light that has come to the world. Kwa hivyo wale wanaegemea elimu ya ushushi na elimu ya ibada potovu wanafanya hivyo kwa sababu hawapendi nuru ya Mungu wanapenda kuegemea giza. The Bible said in the book of John 1 and verse 1 that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Yohana 1:1 mstari wa kwanza maandiko yanasema kwamba hapo mwanzo kulikuwa kwa neno na neno alikuwa kwa Mungu na neno alikuwa Mungu. 
Some of the people do not understand that Jesus is also God. Some of them do not understand that the Holy Spirit is also God. Because the Bible also speaks about the Holy Spirit being God. The same book of John 14 and verse number 26 puts it that uh, but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything i have said to you yohana 14 mstari wa 26 maandiko yanasema lakini huyo msaidisi huyo roho mtakatifu ambaye baba atampeleka kwa jina langu atawafundisha yote na kuwakumbusha yote niliyowaambia so through this person or God that we speak about all things were made and without him nothing was made that has been made kwa hivyo kupitia kwa huyo Mungu tunaenena juu yake vyote viliumbwa na pasipo yeye hakuna chochote kilichoumbwa so who is god kwa hivyo swali ni je Mungu ni nani God finds himself in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mungu anajidhihirisha katika Baba, Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. But you shall find some people who worship Jehovah only. Utawakuta baadhi ya watu ambao wanamwabudu Yehova peke yake. Some people also worship Jesus only. Wengine nao wanamwabudu Yesu peke yake. Some people also give preeminence to the Holy Spirit and the other persons in the Godhead are left behind. Na wengine wanainua zaidi Roho Mtakatifu na wengine katika utatu wa Mungu wanapuuzwa. But God revealed himself in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hata hivyo Mungu amejidhihirisha katika Baba, Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. You cannot divorce the three Awezi kutenganisha watatu hao. They work together. Wanafanya kwa pamoja. They delegate duties to each other. Kila moja wao anapeana jukumu kwa mwingine. They have been present from the beginning. Wamekuepo tangia mwanzo. So if you find somebody that exalts one and leaves the other people, then they are cultic people. Kwa hivyo ukimkuta yeyote anainua mmoja katika utatu na anapunguza wengine fahamu kwamba hao wanaeneza elimu ya usushi because in this god there is life kwa sababu ndani ya huyu mungu kuna hiyo uzima so that means that at the beginning of creation when god the father is predominantly seen we can see life being given to us hiyo ina maana kwamba wakati wa umbaji ambao mbugu baba anaonekana zaidi tunaona tukipewa uzima and that life was also light of all mankind na uzima huo ukawa ni nuru kwa wanadamu wote so at the time of redemption Jesus also brought it Na wakati wa ukombozi Yesu naye akaleta uzima huo. And because now we don't see the Father on daily basis and Jesus, the Holy Spirit has been left to us as a deposit guaranteeing that one day we shall go to heaven. Na kwa sababu sasa tumuoni Baba mara kwa mara na siku zote wala Yesu atumuoni mara nyingi tumepewa Roho Mtakatifu awe anatusaidia hata tunapongoja siku ya mwisho. This light continues to shine in dark Nuru hii inaendelea kung'aa ndani ya Jesus. The truth is that darkness cannot comprehend it. Na ukweli ni kwamba Giza haiwezi nuru huo. Jesus or God the Father that we are talking about and people have actually misused the doctrine of God. Mungu Baba tunaenena juu yake ambaye watu wengine wametumia vibaya mafundisho ya Mungu. This God in totality can talk. Huyu Mungu kwa ukamilifu aweza kuzungumza. He also created us. Alituumba. He has intellect and will. Anayo akili na maarifa. And this is what is said in the Bible by the apostle Paul when he was talking to the young Timothy who was an evangelist at that time. Ndio mtume Paulo akanena alipomnenea eh, Timotheo aliyekuwa mwinjilisti kijana wakati huo. In the first letter of Paul to Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 17 the bible puts it very clear 
Waraka wa kwanza wa Timotheo moja mstari wa 17 maandiko yanaenea kwa wazi and it also talks about God vile vile yanaenea juu ya Mungu the king eternal it says now to the king eternal immortal invisible the only god be honor and glory forever and ever amen sasa kwa mfalme wa milele asiyeweza kuona uharibifu asiyeonekana mungu peke yake na iwe heshima na utukufu milele na milele he's talking here about the attributes of the god that we see and which is exhibited by all the people in the godhead hapa ananenajua tabia za Mungu tunazoweza kuona ambayo pia yanaonekana kwa wote katika utatu wa Mungu. God the Father is eternal. Mungu Baba ni wa milele. The Son is eternal. Mwana ni wa milele. The Holy Spirit is eternal. Roho Mtakatifu ni wa milele. All of them have immortal attributes. Wote wana tabia ya kwamba awafi. They cannot die at any given point. Hawawezi kufa wakati wowote. So if you have a God that dies, kwa hivyo ukiwa na Mungu anayekufa, I want you to know that that is not a God. Na nataka ufahamu kwamba huyo si Mungu. If the Jesus that you believe him in, in is a Jesus that dies. Ikiwa Yesu unayemwamini ni Yesu anayekufa. I want you to know that that is not the right Jesus we are talking about. Nataka ufahamu kwamba huyo sio Yesu wa kweli tunaenena juu yake. This is the Jesus of the scripture. Ye Yesu wa maandiko. The Jesus of the scripture never die. Yesu wa maandiko kamwe hafi. And the Holy Spirit na Roho Mtakatifu is also immortal. Pia naye hafi. Always together with us. Siku zote pamoja nasi. Wherever we go is with us. Kokote tuendapo yuko nasi. This a deposit that has been given to the believer. Yeye ni yule aliyewekewa kwa muaminio. So the believer that is sitting there to listen to us. Kwa hivyo muaminio aliyeketi kutusikia. I want you to know that you are walking with the Holy Spirit. Nataka ufahamu kwamba unatembea na Roho Mtakatifu. And all the pillars of the world put together. Na yeye ni bora kuliko sila zote za vita ulimwenguni sio kwa pamoja. Anazo nguvu. But you cannot see him in person. Hata hivyo hauwezi kumuona kwa asili. Because if you see him today. Kwa sababu ikiwa ungemwona leo. Some of you would brag. Wengine wenu mngejivunia. Some of you would think that they are now more than the other people. Wengine wengu mngejiona mkuu zaidi ya watu wengine. When he reveals himself to you in a physical manner. Anapojivunua yako kwa kwa njia ya asili. Pride will follow you. Kiburi kitakuandama. And many of you and many of us would fall because you brag that you are seeing God face to face. Na wengi wetu tunaweza kuanguka kwa sababu ya kujigamba kwamba tunamuona Mungu uso kwa uso. That is why the Bible says that he is invisible. Ndio sababu maandiko yanasema kwamba aonekani. And he is the only God that we know. Na yeye peke yake ndiye Mungu tunayemfahamu. That God is unchangeable. Huyo Mungu abadiliki. When he says something will be done the way he has instructed then it has to happen. Akisema kitu kitatendeka jinsi alivyoagiza kitatendeka You know many people think that God can change Watu wengine wanadhania kwamba Mungu aweza kubadilika That God that we are talking about to be one in the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit he is not a God that can change Huyo Mungu tunayenena juu yake akiwa moja Baba Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu yeye kamwe abadiliki If he change then it is for your good ikiwa abad, anabadilika basi ni kwa wema wako we can change because we need we we depend on god on anything for us to continue sisi tunaweza kubadilika kwa sababu tunamtegemea mungu kwa kila kitu ndio tuendelee but the god that we serve cannot change lakini mungu tunayemtumikia kamwe abadiliki he doesn't require us in anything atuhitaji kwa chochote but we require him or we need him in everything hata hivyo sisi tumuhitaji kwa vyote so we need that god kwa hivyo tumuhitaji huyo mungu this god that we are talking about huyu mungu tunaenena juu yake is a perfect god yeye ni mungu mkamilifu the bible says in the book of deuteronomy 32 and from verse number 4 that this our god is a god that is perfect kumbukumbu la torati 32 kuanzia mstari wa 
inatuonyesha kwamba huyu Mungu wetu ni mkamilifu. And the Bible puts it that he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Yeye mwamba kazi yake ni kamilifu maana njia zake zote ni haki. Mungu wa uaminifu, asiye na uovu, yeye ndiye mwenye haki na adili. Some people that try to imitate God by so calling themselves small gods, they are never perfect. Wengine wanaojaribu kumuiga Mungu kwa njia kujiita miungu midogo, wao hawajakamilika. They become sick. Wanagonjeka. Their bodies are weak. Mili yao yana udhaifu. When they talk, they cannot say that they are the rock. Wanapozungumza hawawezi kusema kwamba wao ni mwamba. If they become the rock then a small rock for their generation or for their homes. Ikiwa wangekuwa ni miamba basi ni miamba midogo kwa visasi vyao ama nyumba zao. But the God that we are talking about is the rock of all ages. Lakini Mungu tunayenena juu yake ni mwamba wa siku zote. And his ways are just. Na njia zake ni za haki. A faithful God who does no wrong. Yeye ni Mungu mwaminifu mw, mw, asiyetenda uovu. He is upright and no sin can be found in him. Yeye ni mwenye haki na dhambi kama haipatikani ndani yake. I know about somebody who called himself a small god. Namjua mtu fulani ana but he was so imperfect that even at the long run he's marrying several ladies so that he can have a, a big polygamous home and because of that he cannot be perfect because the truth be said no man can be perfect but the god that we are talking about scriptures say after time and again that he is a perfect god so the god that we are able to follow and the whole universe is able to rally uh, and follow him is a perfect god kwa hivyo mungu tunayemfuata na ambaye ulimwengu wote wanaweza kujifuata kumfuata ni mungu mkamilifu is the rock to everybody yeye ndiye mwamba kwa wote he is works are perfect neno lake ni kamilifu he has created perfect being ame viumba vitu vikamilifu he walks with people on perfect paths anatembea na watu kwa njia iliyo kamilika and his ways are always just na njia zake ni za haki that is the god that we are talking about huyo ndiye mungu tunayenena juu yake so nobody should tell you that god is not perfect even god can make a mistake kwa hivyo mwanadamu yeyote asikudanganye kwamba mungu sio mkamilifu ati hata yeye anaweza kufanya uovu god can never make a mistake mungu hawezi kukosa yes men can make mistakes hiyo wanadamu wanaweza kukosea but the god that we are talking about lakini mungu tunayenena juu yake is a god that can never make a mistake ni mungu asiyekosa Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this our God. Kwa sababu huyu Mungu wetu is a God that shall never make any mistake. Ni Mungu ambaye kamwe hatakosa. Did you know something else that God has? Je, ulifahamu kitu kingine alicho nacho Mungu? That the other people who call themselves small gods do not have. Ambayo watu wanaojiita miungu wengine hawana. That God is holy. Huyo Mungu ni mtakatifu. And that is why he wants those who follow him to be holy. Na ndio sababu wanata kawote wanamfuata wawe watakatifu but many times we cannot reach the holiness of god well, lakini mara nyingi tusifikie utakatifu wa mungu he told that to the israelites in the book of leviticus akawaambia wana wa israeli mambo hayo katika kitabu cha walawi he also repeated to the church in the in the new testament about holiness in the book of 1 peter 1 and verse number 16 na kairudia kwa kanisa katika agano la agano jipya katika waraka wa kwanza wa petero 1:16 this time peter was talking to people and he thought of exhorting the church and telling them how to behave wakati huo petero akawa akinena na kanisa na akijisikia kuhimiza kanisa jinsi inavyowapasa kuenenda and he told them it is written na akawaambia kwamba imeandikwa holy because i am holy mweni watakatifu kwa kuwa mimi ni mtakatifu this god exhibits holiness huyu mungu anadhihirisha utakatifu there's nobody who can 
have that level of holiness as that which is born of God. Some people try to put on white garments to show that they are holy. Some of us also try to put on very neatly to show that we are holy. But the truth be told The God that we are talking about Is a holy God So if you are going to worship anything And you are going to deviate from worshiping the Lord Is that thing holy? The God that we are talking about is the God of the Bible. Works with the other people in the Godhead in triunity manner. In the book of First Corinthians 8 and verse number 16 katika waraka wa kwanza wa korinto nane mstari wa 16 oh 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 the bible talks of the unity maandiko yanenena juu ya umoja sorry we shall leave that one but go to isaiah 43 and verse number 10 pole tusome isaiah 3 mstari wa 10 eh isaiah speaks about it in a way that we would love Isaiah ananena juu yake kwa njia tukayoipenda 43 verse 10 it says you are my witnesses declares the lord and my servant whom i have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that i am he before me no god was formed nor will there be one after me Isaiah 43 mstari wa 10 maandiko yanasema ninyi ni mashahidi wangu asema bwana Na mtumishi nilie mchagua mpate kujua na kuniamini na kufahamu ya kwa mamimi ndiye Kabla yangu akuumbwa mungu wa wae yoyote wala baada yangu, baada yangu mimi hata kuwepo mwingine So before God there was no any other God that was formed Kwa hivyo kabla ya mungu hakuna mungu mwingine alia umbwa And this is why we believe in the God that we know because before him there is no any other God that was Ndiyo sababu tumuamini mungu tunayemsadiki kwa sababu kabla yae akuwepo mungu mwingine. And he also puts it very clearly that nor shall there be any other God after him. He anasema kwa wazi kwa mba hata kuwepo mungu mwingine baada yake. This is what uh, uh, the psalmist David also talked about one day in the book of Psalm 90 and verse 2 when he was talking of God to be eternal. Ndiyo vile vile muandisho wa saburi Daudi alivyo sema katika saburi tisaini mstari wa pili haki sema kwa mba mungu ni wa milele. And so we need to understand that the God that we are talking about is eternal God. Kwa hivyo inatupasa kufamu kwa mba mungu tunayenena juu yake ni mungu wa milele. So that God that we speak about. Kwa hivyo huyo mungu tunayenena juu yake. Nobody should cheat us in anything about the God that we know. Because this doctrine has been abused by many people who call themselves the people who know God. And Man is free. God is eternal. And before the mountains were born or brought forth into the world, the everlasting and everlasting God was there. Where are the people who call themselves God? Can you show yourselves today? This is why one day uh, the prophet of God in Israel went and he contended with the prophets of Baal. And people think that the same cannot come again today. Let me tell you it can happen. Because that time Jezebel was killing literally all the prophets of God. And God was not happy about it. 
So God said that there will not be any rain for three and a half years. Na Mungu akasema kwamba kutakuwa mvua kwa miaka mitatu na nusu. That was a long period of time. Hiyo ikawa ni muda mrefu mno. And then the prophet the man of God said, "Can you come?" Na nabii huyu mtumishi wa Mungu akasema na mje. And when they came they started crying to their God to bring rain. Na walipokuja wakaanza kumlilia Mungu wao alete mvua. And what did the prophet do? Na je, nabii alifanya nini? He told them to continue crying to their God. Aliwaambia waendelee kumlilia Mungu wao. They kept on crying. Wakaendelea kulia. It reached uh, evening the time when they were supposed to be giving sacrifices. Ikafika jioni wakati wa kutoa dhabihu. He started laughing at them. Akaanza kuwacheka. And he said that maybe your God is asleep. Na akasema labda Mungu wenu wamelala. Maybe your God does not understand what we are saying. Labda Mungu wenu asielewe mnayosema. Maybe he went for a Jan. Labda ameenda safari. Then when he took the mantle as the man of God. Na yeye alipochukua ushukani kama mtumishi wa Mungu. He wanted to show them that the doctrine of God can never be abused. Aliwataka kuonyesha kwamba fundisho juu ya Mungu hawezi kutumiwa vibaya. And if you abuse it you cannot go away with it. Na ikiwa utaitumia vibaya hauwezi kujiokoa. So what did he do? Na je alifanya nini? He poured water on the sacrifice. Akamwaga maji juu ya dhabihu until the gallons of water went about waka maji yakawa yamejaa and then he started calling the god of heaven akaanza kumuita mungu wa bingu the god that is known from time immemorial mungu ambaye amejulikana tangu mwanzo the god who is eternal mungu wa milele the god who hears his people and can talk mungu anayewasikia watu wake na anaweza kuzungumza when he called him what did you think happened alipomuita unadhani nini ilifanyika came from above moto ukashuka kutoka mbinguni so this god that we have kwa hivyo mungu tuliye naye he answers people by fire yeye yeah, anajibu kwa moto later on he went on to to pray baadaye aliendelea kuomba he told the king to be at peace akamwambia mfalme atulie because he was it was going to rain kwa sababu ulikuwa mvua unyeshe so the god that we are talking about today kwa hivyo mungu tunayenena juu yake leo hii and change about God. Yeye ni Mungu asiyebadilika. Let us not deviate from the truth and worship any other thing. Tusiondoke kwa ukweli na kuabudu kitu kingine. We want to worship God. Tunataka kumwabudu Mungu. We want to worship God the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Tunataka kumwabudu Mungu Baba, Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. And be close to him. Na kuwa karibu naye. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. So may God bless you. Mungu akubariki. As we think of the other things. Tunapowaza juu ya mambo mengine. And as we pray that people people shall not deviate from the truth. Na tunapomba kwamba watu wasiondoke kwa ukweli. In Jesus day. Kwa jina la Yesu. So shall we pray. Na tuombe. Father Lord, we want to thank you. Bwana Mungu tuwakushukuru. Thank you because you continue to reveal yourself to us. Asante kwa sababu unaendelea kujidhihirisha kwetu. And so we pray that your people shall not be lost. Kwa hivyo tuombe kwamba watu wako wasipotee. And your power shall be evident and present in our midst. Nguvu yako itakuwa dhahiri katikati yetu. In Jesus name we pray. Kwa jina la Yesu tumeomba.